These are very important times that we're living in. It's important that we stay well informed on the important issues of the day. Actually, haven't we all had enough of the serious crap going on in the world right now? Yes. Maybe what we really need is to just be able to shut our minds off and think about fun stuff for a while. Like politics? Yes. No. Actually, uh, who doesn't love useless pop culture facts? I know I do. I can't remember what I walked into the kitchen for two seconds after I turned on the light, but I have no problem matching the Winnie the Pooh characters to the mental illnesses they represent. Is that true? Stay tuned. With that in mind, I'm Mike. And I'm Tristan, and we present to you a bunch of useless pop culture facts that you really don't need to know. But why not know them anyways? Did I say uh, politics? I meant pop culture. I believe him. The line, Luke, I am your father, is never spoken in any Star Wars movie. This is true. The set, oh. Yeah, that's it. That's it. That's the, that's the whole fact. Oh, that's the whole fact? Yeah. Oh. The line is actually no. I am your father. I thought we might we were explain it. We're not gonna explain it. This well, that's what we're doing right now. We're explaining it. Yeah, no, the line, well, first of all, the line was hidden from right. a lot of people. Right. And then, yeah, it's uh, no. David Prowse was pretty upset. <laughs> he was upset about a lot of things. David though. Prowse, <laughs> chill, okay? Sorry, J Dave. Just chill. The set used as Sherlock Holmes' house in the 2009 movie starring Robert Downey Jr. and Jude Law is the same set used in Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix as Sirius Black's house. Oh, Jude huh? Law was used as Sirius Black's house? They misspelled Sirius. <gasps> Robin, what the hell? I didn't write it. Seriously? I didn't write it. Yeah. <laughs> I am serious, and don't call me Shirley. Speaking of Sherlock Holmes... We're speaking about Sherlock Holmes. <laughs> Sherlock never said elementary, my dear Watson. Now that I didn't know, but I'm also not a... Well, I can't say I'm not a huge Sherlock Holmes fan, because I've seen several of the movies, I've read the books, and I've seen the TV show, so... I, I saw The Great Mouse Detective. I saw that too, recently, at me the too. beginning of this year. Yeah, me too. Thanks, Mouse, you saved Disney. But that's another story. And another Mouse. And another mouse. Cool. So anyway, okay. These, <laughs> these first few bits are just gonna be little, little, uh, little factoids, and eventually we'll get more into the deeper nitty gritty of things. So yeah, that's when our writer got like excited about uh, <laughs> about his volunteer work. Yeah. Speaking of Sherlock Holmes. Jane Jetson, the matriarch of the Jetson family, is listed as 33 years old. What? George Jetson. I'm older than Jane Jetson? Well, George Jetson is 40 years old, so you're younger than uh, that person. Their daughter, Judy Jetson, is listed as 15 years old. This means that Jane Jetson would have to have been a teen parent. Jane is 33. Apparently. Get the hell out of here. Well, Jane would have been a barely legal 18 when Judy was born, while George was 25. The cartoon just got a little... icky. Don't know icky. how I feel about this. Icky Vicky. Ew! Ew! What are the names of the dwarves in Disney's Snow White and the Seven Dwarves? Wait, can I actually try and guess? Okay. Doc? Yes. Sleepy? Yes. Bashful? Yes. Sneezy? Yes. Grumpy? Yes. Dopey? Uh-huh. Happy! There you go. Yes! But, in the original Grimm's fairy tales, the oh, dwarves no. were anonymous. Oh, that's not as bad as I thought it was going to be. <laughs> they have no names. The first time they were given names was when a musical based on the story premiered on Broadway in 1912. Their original names in that production were Blick, Flick, Snick, Pick, Glick, Wick, and Quee. <laughs> what? Or Walter. 
Walt, his producers and writers for the film, came up with over 50 names for the dwarves. Among those rejected were Tubby, Baldy, <laughs> Baldy, Puffy, Lazy, Shorty, Burpy, Hickey, and Deffy? Oh, God! That's probably Dopey. Oh, no. No, that'd be Mutie. Oh, no. Oh, good lord. Still, they, they ended up not getting too original with them in the end. I really wish Quee was still there. Quee. This dwarf's always happy. What are we going to call him? I don't know. Grumpy. Let's call him... Happy. Sad. Bill, you're a genius. I wish, I wish there was a dwarf named Depresso. Depressy? Wonder Woman is one of DC Comics' greatest heroes. She's a member of the DC Holy Trinity of herself, Batman, and Superman. That's three. That sure is. Before there was a Justice League, there was the Justice Society of America. After proving herself a powerful defender against evil, the original group made her a member an honorary member as their secretary. Nope. That, uh, okay. Where she could only do their busy work and not go on any missions. This list brought you by Depresso. But it's not as sexist as it sounds, and I don't believe that. It was actually because her creator, William Moulton Marston, didn't want anyone else to write her adventures and had it written in his contract. Still handled pretty sexistly, in my opinion. The writer of JSA wanted her on the team, but were forced to keep her on the sidelines. I still think you could have done more. Baby, Baby steps, I guess. Baby steps, I guess. It's written right there in the script. It's still pretty sexist. That's as far as they could go. And yeah, we'll make her the secretary. More like the, the secretary, I don't know. More like the sexist for Terry. Get it? No. It was very, oh. In 1991, Nirvana- The year that Hook came out. I forget that feeling of deja vu. That's I do, really weird. I just did this. Oh. This is take two. <laughs> In 1991, Nirvana broke onto the music scene with an anthem to the rebelliousness and power of youth. Power. It smells like teen spirit. Nice. The title of the song actually came from a can of deodorant. I smell a lawsuit. It's a long story but the quick version goes like this. Kurt Cobain and his girlfriend were walking through the aisles of a grocery store when she and a friend that was with them saw a can of deodorant called Teen Spirit. They joked about this for a while because, as they asked, what the hell is Teen Spirit supposed to smell like? Sweat and weed? That's a drug. <laughs> Sweat? Later that night, the girls <laughs> ransacked Cobain's apartment and the friend wrote, Kurt smells like Teen Spirit. Later, while he was writing lyrics, he remembered the graffiti and decided it was good for a song. He never took the song seriously, deciding that he should write the ultimate pop anthem. He intentionally lifted the guitar riff from Boston's More Than a Feeling and wrote ridiculous lyrics about teen apathy. It was a song the band didn't really care for and it was never supposed to be a single. Hmm. But the Weird Al version is the best. In the Disney films, who said, mirror, mirror on the wall? Who's the fairest of them all? Michael. No one. No one! That's the answer. Nobody. The line is, magic mirror on the wall. Speaking of Nirvana, Elvis Presley was a natural blonde. He started dyeing his <gasps> hair in his oh. teens to get in edgier look. I'd say he succeeded. My brain just like he tied his hair blonde to get an edgier look. I'm like, yeah, I don't think so. I've only seen him in black and white, so I had no idea. It's true. Well, no, you can't. <laughs> he dyed his hair black. Yeah, correct. <laughs> The man who voiced Mickey Mouse, <laughs> and the woman... That wasn't planned. No, it wasn't. And the woman who voiced Minnie Mouse... <laughs> That's my name. <laughs> I'm sad. 
<laughs> well, those two voice actors <laughs> were actually married in 1991, the year that Hook came out. <laughs> Wayne Allwine, who voiced Mickey through most of the 80s, and Rusty Taylor, who took over the role of Minnie in 1986, that's when I were, came out. Were married Wait, for over on. two decades. Wait. Born. <laughs> well, they were married for over two decades until Wayne's death, sad, in 2009. And then Rusty has since passed away, I believe. Oh, no. Why didn't you write that, Robin? I didn't write the list! She Obviously! Was, if I remember, she was also the voices of Huey, Dewey, and Louie from DuckTales, the original. Oh, she died. <laughs> yeah, that's what I said. The head Game of Thrones costume designer, Michelle Clapton, revealed that the cloaks worn by the Night's Watch were made from Ikea rugs. Hmm. If you liked a cosplay or would simply like to, you know, own one. You can find directions to make them online. Tristan, throw that URL on I the will screen. throw a bit.ly up there, because that's a pretty long URL. In the show Grey's Anatomy, also known as Depression, there are no fake organs used in any of the surgery scenes. Wow. All of the internal organs are real. How cool is that? Well, if you were an extra, you really had to sign a waiver. Oh my goodness. They use cow organs to increase the authenticity of the scenes, because nothing says human like cow. Also, the hands during the surgery are not those of the actors. Well, that's good. <laughs> the show employees, the show employs real surgeons to be hand doubles for the actors who have no idea how to do any type of surgery. Well, that's presumptuous. Maybe some of them do. You don't know what they took in school. That's true. That's true. That's presumptuous. You just got, imagine like studying to be a doctor and getting stuck on Grey's Anatomy. Well. What a tragic life. Correcting writers like, no, you're doing it wrong. No, it's not how it's written. Anyone that has to be involved in Grey's Anatomy must live a miserable life, because I hate that show. Patrick Dempsey probably doesn't lead a miserable life. Is he rich? Yes. I assume Sounds so. Sounds nice. Brian Wait, Cranston. hold on. Oh. I actually want to take this one. Okay. I deserve this more okay. than you. Brian Cranston is simply iconic as Walter White in Breaking Bad. It would be very strange to watch the show with either of the actors who turned down the role before it was offered to Cranston. Matthew Broderick and John Cusack. Or Matthew Broderick. And John Cusack. Oh, did he say that wrong too? Yes. Oh. Maybe I shouldn't have taken this one. <laughs> Yeah, I really Brian want to Cranston! See. Sorry, I don't know enough about them. They weren't Walter White. I really want to see just a dorky Matthew Broderick play Walter White. It'd be so funny. Let's do a list of... Uh, Two of those were actually in Godzilla movies. 25 actors Tristan can't pronounce. Oh, God. All right. I'll just look up a name. Yeah. <laughs> In the movie Spider-Man Far From Home, Spider-Man, Spider-Man, Spider-Man Spider never punched anyone. Good for him. Not even once. Good for him. All of his fighting is done with his web shooters and kicks. That's just semantics. Disney owns Marvel. And that's it. That we next, know. Next fact. But because of pre-existing contracts, they cannot use most of the characters in the Marvel Universe for any of their East Coast theme parks because those rights are held by Universal Studios. Any of the characters to... Would you shut that off? I sure will. We're talking about Disney. You got to use my Disney ringtone. So what is that ringtone? People still don't know what it is. Let us know in the comments below or tweet your answer to us at OKThankYT. Now, any of the characters depicted in the superhero islands at Islands of Adventure in Orlando, Florida are exclusive to Universal. If you go there, there are two statues of characters who are not involved in any rides or attractions depicted. This is so that the rights to those characters couldn't revert to any other company should Marvel be sold. But the really odd part about this whole situation is that Marvel was never even supposed to be at Islands of Adventure in the first place. In the original concepts, the entire area was meant to be filled with DC characters, and Superhero Island was intended to be split between Gotham and Metropolis. The Spider-Man ride My was designed one. as a Superman experience first. D 
DC, however, ended up going to the Six Flags parks, and Universal settled for Marvel. <laughs> okay. They now get to sell merchandise for Disney, and we did have someone in our Discord, which you should totally join, ask, no, wait, was it our Discord, or was it uh, the comments below? Either way, join our Discord. Someone asked, well, why is, Di why is Disney allowing their stuff to be at Universal? There's no downside. They're literally making their competition sell their product. They're making money at Universal. They are making money off of their competitors. It was on Discord. Why would they pull it out? The term Easter eggs, being the names for hidden references in movies, goes back to the Rocky Horror Picture Show. If you haven't seen it with a live cast, Mike, you haven't seen it. I don't like that movie. <laughs> It's That's just written thing. in the script. It's not my thing! Well, if you see it with a live cast, it's a lot more fun. Well, maybe I'll do the time warp again. No, I won't. I don't like that movie. Let's do time Shut up, Robin! We're getting sued! It was miserable for the cast during filming. Yes, his real and cast the audience! Hall. What? Oh. It was miserable for the cast during filming in a real castle during an English winter. It was always dark, raining, and cold, that's and a, the cast was usually dressed in only lingerie and underwear. That's just what an English summer is like. <laughs> they were usually freezing and wet, and many in the cast got sick with colds. To boost morale, the producers had Easter egg hunts on set. Oh. That's actually, got, that's really sweet. I like this. It was a bit of fun that everyone enjoyed. I like how it's insinuating that it wasn't a lot of fun, but they did what they could. Guys, it's raining and miserable. Let's go hunt Easter eggs. Ugh! But the thing is, not all the eggs were found, and some were left on set in view of the cameras. You can watch the movie and try to find them. Or you could not. Mike doesn't like Rocky Horror Picture Show. I don't. Yeah, well, one of my best friends in the world was is in Rocky? Rocky Horror Picture Show, and she did great. Shout out to Emma, best actress that I know. I feel like she wasn't in the original. Well, not in the original, but she did. Uh, what was her character's like, name? Who are you friends with, Meatloaf? <laughs> Have you seen this movie? No. Why not? It's scary. In the 1982 movie Poltergeist, there are many strange stories of curses and the unexplained. Some are said to be true. Some are urban legends. But there are some real legends. <laughs> but one is true and certified. In the pool scene at the end of the movie, spoilers, spoilers real skeletons were used. <gasps> the bodies were real. Nobody told actress Jo Beth Williams about this until after she was done filming her scenes, splashing around in muddy water surrounded by them. Aww. That's a... Uh... Good filmmaking right there. I agree. I agree. George Lucas desperately wanted to remake the Flash Gordon serials from the 1930s. Dino De Laurentiis. Dino. Thank you. If you say that name. De Laurentiis. <laughs> Dino De Laurentiis. All right, we're, we're three names in that Tristan can't pronounce. So maybe his name is Dino. Well, you can't pronounce King Feature Syndicate. He held the movie rights from King Feature Syndicate, who oh, printed the original Dino comic strip. Uh, De Laurentiis. Had originally sold the rights to Federico Fellini. <laughs> <laughs> Federico Fellini! There's a bit of a glare there. We're I also. We're doing it over. No, no I like this. Right. This is fine. It's not fine, it's a train wreck. You know what else was a train wreck? Kurt Cobain's life. I looked up when he died. It's not too soon. George Lucas desperately wanted to remake the Flash Gordon serials from the 1930s. Oh, Dino De Laurentiis. Held the movie rights from King Feature Syndicate, who printed the original comic strip. De Laurentiis? Had originally sold the rights to Federico Fellini, but he never made the film and the rights reverted back to... They oh. reverted back. De Laurentiis refused to sell the rights to Lucas, so, to ease his disappointment, Lucas decided to use his ideas to write his own space opera. It was called... Star, Star Trek. Trek. Really? <laughs> huh. 
Again, not planned. It's Star Wars. Yes, it's Star Wars. Like that's not on my shirt. It was, it was, it was called Star shirt. Wars. The game, Candyland. Oh, wait, I thought you had the last one. <laughs> oh, right. Well, I liked how... Uh, let me say Candyland. The game... Candyland. ...was created in 1949 to help children get through quarantine. Hey! Huh. <laughs> it was used as a tool to entertain children in the polio ward of a San Diego hospital. Maybe you should get out Candyland! If you have Candyland, let us know in the comments below. Or don't. <laughs> Stupid information. <laughs> it was an easy to learn game that children could play between treatments they had to do in iron lungs. Cool. Fun. The children had little time between treatments and the quick gameplay allowed them to finish a game before they had to go back. And you're being asked to wear a mask. Just saying. Hey, iron lungs are cooler. Candyland. Wear a mask. That's why they don't want to wear a mask. They want to play more Candyland. Huh. You can wear a mask and play Candyland. No. No. Just wear a mask. No. Get the f*** out of here. You may not know the name Frederick Barr. I know I don't. And there's no reason that you would. I'm gonna say Bauer. But you know his most famous invention, Bauer. Or Barr. Or Barr was an organic chemist and food storage technician who designed the stackable chip and the Pringles can. Rob, but open that trash can. This is terrible. It's not in here. There's a Pringles can. There's two of them. There's not. There's literally two of them. There's not. Dig. I'm not digging through trash. No, get back here. Wait. You are not digging through trash right it's now. Right. You don't have to dig that far. Oh my god. <laughs> Ugh, that came out of the trash. It's barely on top. It's covered in Rona. <laughs> I just went... Well, speaking of what Mike just did. Wendy's Baconator Pringles. Well, speaking of Mike's previous actions, when he died in 2008, at the age of 90, his ashes were placed in one of those Pringles cans, and he was buried in it. Probably this one. Oh, oh, oh. And just in case you're interested, oh, this is just a totally new thing. Cool. And just in case you're interested, because it was in the intro, but not the actual list, here are the mental problems of the Winnie the Pooh characters. Christopher Robin. Oh, wait, wait, hold on. Are we still? Yeah. Christopher Robin. Schizophrenia! All these characters exist. Are we in still his... going? Yeah, we're still Why going. Why am I not reading? You read the Pringles one. Because this is just part of the outro. Is it? Yep. Is it? Yep, Christopher Robin. Schizophrenia. All these characters exist in his mind while not being real to him. And he manifests each depending on his mood. Winnie the Pooh, likely eating disorder, and ADHD. Oh, am I going finally? Sure. Rabbit. OCD, oh, obsessive compulsive disorder. I didn't really get. Tigger. Crippling ADHD. Owl. Short term memory loss and dyslexia. Who? Piglet. Me, anxiety disorder. Kanga. Social anxiety disorder, which causes her to be overly protective. Excuse me, okay, hold on. The way I read hold that, on. by the way, because it's on different lines, it was Kanga. And I was gonna go, depression. That's not a character. Kanga is not overly protective of Rue. All the dangerous shit she lets him go off with Tigger, who is by far the least competent adult in that universe. Is he an adult? I, I think he's an adult. Mm -hmm. I would not trust Tigger to babysit my children. He bought him up a tree. What? He brought him up a tree once. Rue's the one who got down all fine. Yeah, but Tigger got stuck. Rue's a Rue. Rue, on the autism spectrum, which is why he doesn't understand situational danger and is always drawn to being in his mother's pouch. Eeyore. <laughs> this one is most obvious. He's, He's too, too happy. happy. Really? Yep. <laughs> okay. We're kidding. It's crippling depression. <sighs> so, movies? Uh, do you have crippling depression? Let's Let us know in the comments, comments below. below. Or tweet your answer to us at OKThankYT. Uh, uh, what's your favorite pop culture fact? That depression. Maybe, yeah, maybe most people don't know about. Or? And it's completely useless. Don't care about me. 
Um, yeah, let us know in the comments below or tweet your answers to us at OKThankYT. Uh, be sure to check out all of our social media links in the description below, and we'll see you next time. Also, there's a number you can call during our live streams. We didn't write it this time, so it'll be somewhere here. 573-575-OKTY. I've memorized it. That's good. That, hey, that's, hey. that's important. Hey, Mike. Hi. What numbers go along with OKTY? 6589. Oh, cool. That's pretty neat. Memorize that, too. My favorite pop culture fact is that Casablanca is the greatest movie ever made. It's not really it. A yeah. fact? It is a fact. It's not a thing, It's a freaking fact. This is facts people don't care about. Oh, I don't care. <laughs> Alright. You win. Follow close behind by the social media.